So now let's take a look at some additional clear text protocols that we can use and, and view those in Wireshark while examining our TCP sessions. All right. So uh, w what I've done is I have just a, a router set up on my network and uh, I'm going to get Wireshark started here. And after I start Wireshark, I'm going to open up Putty. And Putty is just a little SSH client. And uh, here, what I want to do is I want to Telnet to 10.0.0.1, which is my router. Username here is admin. Password is Cisco, except it's not going to display that. I'm going to do a show running configuration here so that uh, we have some text that we can generate. And then uh, I'm just going to exit my uh, Telnet session here. And we will uh, stop my capture. And let's go in now and, and uh, go up to statistics, conversations, and let's find this TCP conversation. So in this particular case, there's only one conversation here. We'll select that and click follow stream. Here now, what we're seeing is the conversation between my workstation and the Telnet server on the router. And remember, anything in red are commands that I'm sending to the router, and anything in blue is information that the router is sending to me. Okay, and we can notice right away the username here, we can see it, A-A-D-D-M-M-I-I-N-N, -N. and then the password, C-I-S-C-O. Well, remember, red is me sending to the server, and blue is the server sending back to me. When we typed in our password, I typed in an A, and then the server responded with an A, and then I typed in a D, and the server responded with a D. And then I typed in an M, and the server responded with an M, and so on. When I typed in Cisco, I just typed C-I-S-C-O. I don't see the return character there. Well, let's, let's do a quick, uh, let me log back into Putty here so you can see this actually in action. So let's go back to Telnet uh, 10.0.0.1. All right, so here we're typing in our username of admin, A-D-M-I-N, right? And every, every keystroke that I type, it put that character into the display, all right? When I put the password in now, we're going to see that the password is not going to reply with characters, right? So we don't, we don't have those characters replying. When I type show run, I see the characters once again on the screen. And that reflects here on the router. Okay, uh, here I typed S, it displayed an S, H, it displayed an H, O, it displayed an O, and so on. All right, and then it shows me the whole output of the running configuration that I took a look at and shows me typing exit here. If I close this and we just go right in and take a look here, we will see at the top here, we'll see a SYN message, SYNAC, and ACK. All right, what we should be seeing here in our flags is that this push bit should always be set, all right? This push bit should always be set here because what we're saying is if I press the S key, send the S key to the router, and then immediately respond with the, the S key so I can display it on my display as well on this end. The reason we need to set that is that by default, the TCP IP stack in our client and our server automatically will wait for at least two segments to arrive before sending an acknowledgement. Except that could be a problem if I want to display the keystrokes that I'm sending to the server, and I need the server to send me back the keystrokes to display, what I need to do is for every keystroke I press, I need to immediately send that to the server, and then have the server immediately reply back without waiting for any length of time at all. So this push bit allows that to happen. All right, by default, the, uh, the TCP IP stack is going to wait for typically at least two segments to arrive before it responds with an acknowledgement. 
Here we want to accelerate that process and have a much more transactional process here. So that if I push a key on my end, it immediately gets sent back to me after the server receives it. If we scroll down to the end here, once I typed exit in Telnet, my workstation then sent the FinAC. The server replied with an ACK and set its own FinAC, and I replied with an ACK. So we have our three-way handshake at the beginning. We're transferring whatever we want in the middle, and then the four-way disconnect at the end. Let me save this conversation so that you can take a look at it. We'll call this Telnet Capture. And uh, then what I want to do is I want to just go ahead and start a new capture. All right. Uh, let me clear my TCP stream there. And in my new capture, this time what I want to do is I'm going to, oh my goodness, I'm still logged in here to Putty. Let's, uh, let's close that. And uh, open up a new Putty session. P-U-T-T-Y. And now here what I'll do is this time I'm going to SSH. All right, I've also enabled SSH on this router. So if I telnet, or if I SSH now to 10.0.0.1, log in the same way, I'll do a show run again, and then I'll hit exit. Okay, this time uh, let's, let's uh, stop my capture. We'll go up to statistics, conversations, and TCP. This time we had three conversations here. Uh, one was to some website here. I'm not sure what that is. We we're not going to worry about it. Uh, another one was a t that Telnet session that I had open. And then the last one here is my SSH session. Let's follow that stream. And now what we're going to see here is we're going to see in clear text, we're going to see our negotiation of SSH, where it's, where it's exchanging what keys it's going to use. And then after it does that, in this first part, after we exchange all the key information, it just becomes complete gibberish after that. Unless you have the keys that were used here to decrypt this, this is going to be completely useless to anybody who uh, captures this information. All right. Uh, if we look at our TCP stream, we still have our SYN, SYNAC, ACK. And then after that, we have our SSH protocol kicking in to do the exchange and uh, and then we have our client and server communicating with each other if we grab any one of these here we have the server at 10001 sending a message to the workstation and once again our push bit is set here for the same exact reason so in the middle here we're just sending our data back and forth once we reach the end when i set exit uh, i sent a finac uh, the server replied with an ACK, and then it just sent a reset. It just shut the connection down right away, did not send that other FinAC. It ended the conversation angrily. Not too worried about it. The conversation is over here. So we we don't have an exact four-way disconnect, but that's not a problem. We have a three-way quick disconnect here, but we did end our connection. So this is SSH. Uh, you'll be able to see that in SSH. All of our data is encrypted there. We cannot see it. Let me save this capture for you. Oh, I need to stop the capture before I save it. <laughs> All right, let's uh, give that a shot again. Save our capture. We'll call this SSH capture. So that wraps up taking a look at clear text and encrypted protocols using Wireshark. Thank you.